Hello and welcome to My Future NC's Policy Update. My name is Corey Biggs and I am Director of Policy and Advocacy for My Future NC. And we are so thankful to all of you for joining us. North Carolina continues to be blessed with a booming economy, yet our state's education and workforce pathways don't work for everyone. To ensure our economic competitiveness, the state of North Carolina, with bipartisan support, has established an ambitious goal to have 2 million North Carolinians ages 25 to 44 to hold an industry-valued credential or college degree by 2030. 2 million by 2030. My Future NC is a statewide nonprofit organization focused on helping North Carolina meet that educational attainment goal. My Future NC is the result of cross-sector collaboration between North Carolina leaders in education, business, government, and the philanthropic sector. We promote the work of all sectors and help find and fill gaps to drive educational access and attainment outcomes that align with and fulfill employer needs. My Future NC promotes a shared vision for an education to workforce continuum across North Carolina from early childhood through adulthood and aligns and supports local, regional, and state actions that will dramatically increase attainment of industry-valued credentials and post-secondary degrees. We are so thankful to have the ongoing support of our amazing board of directors, as well as an advisory board of commissioners of 58 fantastic individuals. And we are very proud to have partnered with our state's policymakers time and again to enhance educational attainment in every corner of North Carolina. Here at the outset of the North Carolina General Assembly's short session, we've seen budgeters are projecting a fairly significant near-term surplus. We've also learned of a few of legislators' plans for education-related budget adjustments. What all budget adjustments ultimately mean for educational outcomes, we'll soon find out. My Future NC has three key policy priorities for this year's session. The process of developing these priorities began nearly a year ago with a scan of best practices for educational attainment from throughout the state and the nation and alongside our partners across North Carolina's education and workforce development sectors, we are excited to advocate for these three key priorities, which are NC workforce credentials, persistence and completion supports, and local and regional technical assistance. We first shared these priorities on February 15th of this year when we hosted eight simultaneous events across each of North Carolina's eight prosperity zones to deliver this year's report on the state of educational attainment in North Carolina, where we highlighted North Carolina's progress toward the 2 million by 2030 goal. Currently, 1.61 million North Carolinians between ages 25 and 44 hold a post-secondary degree or credential. We are about 24,000 degrees and credentials behind where we should be at this point in time in order to be on pace to reach the 2 million by 2030 goal. The good news is that that gap is closing. At this point in time last year, we were about 31,000 degrees and credentials behind pace. So you can see our state is trending in the right direction, and that is due in part to the efforts of our state's policymakers. In the days since we released this year's State of Educational Attainment Report, We've conducted outreach to all 170 members of the General Assembly. I'm also pleased to share that we have met with both House and Senate leadership to discuss our priorities, and we thank them very much for making time to visit with us. We are also especially thankful, as ever, for the strong support of two legislators in particular, Representative Donnie Lambeth and Senator Michael Lee, who serve as designees to My Future NC's Board of Directors from both Speaker Tim Moore and Senate President Pro Tem Bill Berger. Looking at our policy priorities in detail, I first want to shine a light on our partner support items, which you can see at the bottom of your screen. These are items for which we have been advocating and will continue to advocate alongside our partners in North Carolina's education and workforce development sectors, and they include NC Pre-K, the science of reading and its implementation, and high-quality implementation of career development plans. On NC Pre-K, we know that the program cannot expand without additional and ongoing support, and continued growth of the NC Pre-K program is necessary to meet our goal of 75% enrollment of eligible children in every county of North Carolina. Additional funding to expand NC Pre-K is being sought in the short session. On the science of reading, efforts are underway to provide science of reading training to North Carolina middle school teachers. Other states have seen a falling off of progress in literacy gains made in elementary school 
when children reach middle school. Because North Carolina is seeing incredible progress on early literacy thanks to recent reforms, we want our state to be able to build on those gains. On career development plans, we are proud to continue our advocacy in support of high quality implementation, including leveraging ncareers.org as a hub for career development planning. Turning to our three key policy priorities, first, we want to see continued advancement of our work in support of the NC Workforce Credentials Initiative. Since 2021, My Future NC has helped convene stakeholders from across the education and workforce development sectors to form the NC Workforce Credentials Initiative. This initiative has worked to identify non-degree credentials offered throughout the state that are industry valued, meaning they lead to employment opportunities in high demand, high growth fields that pay family sustaining wages. To date, more than 150 credentials have been endorsed by the NC Workforce Credentials Advisory Council as industry valued. State leadership has responded by creating the Short-Term Workforce Development Grant Program to offset costs of pursuing industry-valued credentials. The success of the NC Workforce Credentials Initiative has made North Carolina a national leader in this space. This exceptional impact resulted from collaboration amongst business and industry representatives, the North Carolina Department of Commerce, K-12, higher ed, and the North Carolina Business Committee for Education, all of which continue to dedicate time and resources to develop criteria to examine credentials. The NC Workforce Credentials Initiative's results underscore its value to the state. And that is why we are requesting support for permanently housing leadership of the NC Workforce Credentials Initiative within the Department of Commerce. My Future NC supports $350,000 in recurring funds for two full-time employees within NC Commerce to lead credential endorsement that opens more pathways to high-skilled, higher-wage jobs and to manage a statewide credential database. Where philanthropic support launched this initiative, permanent state support is needed to ensure its continued success. We're also advocating for an increase of at least $10 million in recurring funding for financial aid to students pursuing industry-valued credentials. The 2023 budget codified the Short-Term Workforce Development Grant Program to provide this financial aid, and that program will receive recurring funds of $1 million per year. Demand for these pathways, however, has been shown to be nearly $8 million per year, with enrollment continuing to grow and employers expressing need for credential holders in the labor market. These credential pathways cost on average around $750 per credential, but are not currently Pell eligible, nor are they eligible for state need-based scholarships. My Future NC supports $10 million in recurring funds to both offset costs for students pursuing these pathways and to encourage more individuals to enroll in order to help satisfy growing employer demand. Additionally, and this one is important, we're lifting up for policymakers the importance of improving the state's ability to track certifications and licensures that are the capstone of these industry-valued credential pathways. The training provided to students enrolled in industry-valued credential programs is extremely high quality. Ultimately, however, Employer's interest is not in how many hours of high quality training students receive, but whether those students have passed the associated certification and licensure exams, which demonstrate mastery of skills attained. The vast majority of such certifications and licensures are awarded by non-public issuers and licensing bodies whose data is not readily shared with the state. Improving North Carolina's ability to track this data is key to being responsive to changes in our state's economy and promoting access to the most needed and high demand jobs. And being able to accurately determine the number of North Carolinians for which one of these pathways is their highest level of educational attainment could be the difference in all of us being able to celebrate when we've hit our 2 million by 2030 goal, or perhaps reaching that goal without even knowing it. The end result for my future NC's policy priorities and support of NC workforce credentials is thousands more individuals earning industry value credentials each year, provided, providing improved access to skilled talent for business and industry to meet job demands, as well as strengthened alignment between employer needs and education and training being provided. Our second key policy priority is persistence and completion supports. Targeted assistance for persistence and completion 
is a proven strategy for increasing educational attainment. North Carolina has multiple successful examples of persistence and completion supports, including finish line grants in our state's community colleges and completion assistance grants being implemented at eight UNC system institutions. Increasing completions has never been more important as there is what researchers refer to as an enrollment cliff looming in the years ahead. Due to a decrease in birth rates dating back to the late 2000s recession, there will be fewer high school graduates on average in the years between now and the end of the decade. Because of this demographic shift, it is likely that North Carolina colleges and universities will see fewer on-time enrollments than in previous years in spite of increases in enrollment rates. Supporting those who do enroll all the way through to completion of their chosen pathway is of vital importance to the state and to our institutions of higher education. We've seen great success from the Finish Line Grant Program for community college students, with roughly 88% of recipients shown to have either graduated or re-enrolled in the following academic year, according to initial estimations. Our four-year institutions have been working similarly to develop supports for their students. The UNC system received $2 million in last year's budget for completion assistance grants allocated to Elizabeth City State University, Fayetteville State University, North Carolina A&T, NCCU, UNC Asheville, UNC Greensboro, UNC Pembroke, and Winston-Salem State University. They are requesting an additional $8.5 million in recurring funds for completion assistance grants, and My Future NC is supportive of that request. Our independent colleges and universities students also have need, and we are advocating for $6 million to implement supports for these students. These funds would be administered on behalf of students who are on track to graduate, but at risk of dropping out because of financial shortfalls, with a focus on students who face unexpected emergencies, such as medical bills, car repairs, and a loss of childcare that might otherwise prevent them from finishing their coursework. The end result for this policy priority is more North Carolinians with degrees rather than some college and corresponding debt, but with no degree to bolster them upon entering the workforce. And our final key policy priority is local and regional technical assistance. Over the last several years, My Future NC, in partnership with the NC Impact Initiative at the UNC School of Government, has helped lead the work of cross-sector collaboratives at the local and regional level, which have spurred innovation and improved educational attainment in communities throughout North Carolina. With state support, the evidence-based practices of these cross-sector collaboratives may be scaled across the state, aiding in reaching the state's educational attainment goal. My Future NC advocates for providing $5 million in recurring funds for technical assistance grants to local and regional cross-sector collaboratives to implement innovative, evidence-based practices to increase attainment and training for high-demand jobs. These local collaboratives would leverage grant funds to build or expand effective partnerships and set measurable, achievable goals to drive economic mobility and vitality in a region or prosperity zone. Existing funding structures do not necessarily incentivize cross-sector collaboration. Therefore, supporting collaborative effort through a grant process would spur innovation and promote long-term sustainability. The good news here is that the Department of Commerce has capacity to administer this type of grant, which could go to community partners, including educational institutions, workforce development boards, and economic development groups through alignment with the existing NC Works Local Innovation Grant Program. The end result for this policy priority would be scalable, evidence-based, attainment-focused practices implemented in communities from one corner of our state to the other. Lastly, legislators will be asked to take a look in the short session at the proposed new funding model for North Carolina's community colleges, dubbed Propel NC. This proposed new funding model gives added weight to my future NC's work centered on labor market alignment, ensuring degrees and credentials earned meet employer needs, and improving pathways into high-demand, higher-wage jobs. My Future NC's Board of Directors is currently considering its support for Propel NC. In summary, when taken together, these policy priorities hold the potential to continue moving the needle in the direction of enhanced educational attainment for North Carolinians, resulting in economic growth for our state and increased opportunities for North Carolinians 
from Murphy to Manio. On behalf of our entire team at My Future NC, we thank you for joining us to learn more about these priorities and their intended impact. Finally, I want to say thank you to our many advocacy partners, vital organizations throughout North Carolina who advocate every day for policy solutions that improve the lives of North Carolinians. We continue to work closely with so many partners in this work at both the local and regional level and also the state level, where our partners include the North Carolina Economic Development Association, the North Carolina Association of County Commissioners, and the NC Rural Center, each of which has endorsed our policy priorities and joined us in lifting those up to policymakers. We also receive support from Excel and Ed, Governor Jeb Bush's education advocacy organization, which is a respected source of research and analysis. We have developed issue-specific policy briefs for each of our key policy priorities, which will be provided to you following today's webinar, along with a recording of this presentation, and we encourage policymakers to spend time with these materials. We also encourage the education advocates in the audience today to share this information with others, especially if you find yourselves in conversation with policymakers. And thank you again for joining us today.